the odds are on now that the peak will instead be about 5 to 5.25 percent given we're already at 4.75 percent at the next review on April uh, 5 there's a very good chance that the Reserve Bank will say well we're only going to go up quarter of a percent we may need to go higher but we'll see how things uh, pan out hello again everybody Let's talk a little bit about monetary policy in the context of the takeover by the federal authorities in the United States of Silicon Valley Bank and some of the other stuff we see going across uh, on across there and in Switzerland as well. When a central bank tightens monetary policy, their aim is ultimately to get inflation down uh, because it's too high. Now, the way they tighten monetary policy is to raise an overnight interest rate, and their aim is that this will lead to an increase in bank mortgage rates and bank deposit rates, so people are inclined to save more because the returns on deposits are better, and because the cost of borrowing goes up, people will say, well, okay, it's a bit expensive to buy this thing now, let's say a, a, a house, let's wait until interest rates go down uh, further down the track, and then we will step forward and buy it, because an interest interest rate is basically the cost of consuming a thing now versus the thing in the future. So they want to see interest rates go up there. We see interest rates go up. Uh, the people directly affected by rising interest rates will pull back on spending generally. Businesses will get a bit wary that uh, some of their customers are going to be hard pressed and so they're thinking, well, my costs are going up, but if I increase my prices, maybe these people can't afford to pay it. So maybe let's look for some other way to uh, preserve revenue rather than putting up um, prices. Prices. And of course, the confidence of all of us, even those of us not directly affected by mortgage rates going up, will go, oh, maybe the economy's going to slow down a bit. Um, I'll be just a little bit cautious as well, because maybe this will affect my own job. Maybe it will affect my uh, business receipts, etc. So that's the aim of interest rates going up, uh, of slowing the economy down. Inflation eventually uh, uh, goes back down again. So what have we got with the uh, worries about the Silicon Valley Bank, SVB going under, uh, Credit Suisse being purchased there by uh, UBS, uh, First Republic Bank, Signature Bank in the United States? Well, people are naturally nervous about, does this mean that more banks in the United States are going to go under? Well, we, we don't know. There's no real evidence of bad lending by these banks. This is simply the depositors getting fairly scared, thinking other depositors are going to take their money out, I will take my money um, out first. And so people are nervous out there and one impact is expected to be that banks will look to preserve more deposits, so they're going to cut back on their lending. So this is acting like a bit of a new credit squeeze in the United States. It's leading to weakness in share markets, we see share prices going down in New Zealand, so that makes us all a little bit more cautious about things are here. We see forecasts of, well, maybe the US economy is going to go into a decent recession now. That's going to make us a bit more wary about world growth overall, demand for our uh, exports, um, etc. And overall, people are going to be wary because there's talk about, well, is this going to be another global financial crisis? I definitely don't think so. But the fact that it's all being talked about out there acts as a bit of a suppressing factor for consumer confidence. And in that regard, the takeover of SVB there is acting like a de facto tightening of monetary policy in the United States and around the rest of the world as well. And therefore, to the extent our central bank has still been thinking there's more restraint needed on our economy by raising interest rates further, they're not going to be feeling now that interest rates need to go up as high as they were previously thinking. So that previous thought from them was uh, a peak for the official cash rate of 5.5%, the odds are on now that the peak will instead be about 5 to 5.25%. Given we're already at 4.75%, at the next review on April uh, 5, there's a very good chance that the Reserve Bank will say, well, we're only going to go up quarter of a percent. We may need to go higher, but we'll see how things uh, pan out. The review after that is May of 24, May 24, and so that's going to be maybe the more interesting one where they could be solidly indicating that that's the end of the tightening cycle. So in some regards, if uh, you're a borrower out there, your interest rate is going to be resetting at something higher than the 
half you're on at the moment or so, the SVB uh, uh, collapse, etc. there, it's sort of a double-edged sword. It means your interest rate outlook is better than it was previously. But then, of course, we're all slightly a little bit more nervous than was the case uh, uh, before. So how these things pan out, we'll simply have to wait and see. But it does mean, I think, that the interest rate uh, factor for New Zealand's housing market is shifting further away from heavy restraint, not really into positive in terms of, oh, interest rates are falling, and so that's going to be boosting uh, uh, the market. But of course, there is the extra caution that people are going to feel as a result of these events overseas. So we're still in the middle of this, I'm going to call it a mini maelstrom at the moment. It's not the GFC, it's not the Asian financial uh, uh, crisis, but we're still going to have to wait a bit before we get a clearer picture. Hopefully in a week's time, you know, we'll see evidence that this isn't spreading overall to many more banks, if any, hopefully, um, in the United States. All the best out there.